guys, today I'm going to show you how to work out the area of a triangle. So hopefully you already know how to work out the area of a triangle like this, base times height divided by 2. So in order to use this formula, you must know the length of the base and also the perpendicular height, okay, which is what's been given here. So in this one, you would just do the base, which is 10, multiplied by the height, which is 5, divided by 2, so 10 times 5 is 50, divided by 2 is 25. Not forgetting the units for area, which are always squared, so that would be centimetres squared. So, in this next example, we don't know the perpendicular height of this triangle, so we can't use that formula anymore. So when that happens, you need to use this formula over here. The area equals a half a b sine c. So, until we put this into practice and actually look at this example, it looks a little bit confusing. C, capital C, is the angle that we know in the question. So, in this one, this is angle C. Side C would be the little one over here. So, the side that's opposite the angle is the same letter, but usually we write the angle as a capital letter and the side as a lowercase letter. And the other sides are lowercase a and b, so not capital letters, so just a and b. But it doesn't matter which way round you write those two. So when we look at this formula, we only, only actually need three of these things. We don't need this side up here, it's not in the formula, the lowercase c. We only need this angle and these two sides, which are next to the angle. So to work out the area, we just multiply a half with the side A, which in this one happens to be 4. Then you multiply it with the side B, which is 7. And then you need to multiply by sine of the angle. So in this one, it's sine 62. So that's all you have to do. Take your calculator to work this one up because you'll get a decimal answer. I'll just get my calculator. Okay, that's better. So, a half times 4 times 7 times sine 62, which is, and there's lots of figures here, so it's 12.3612, and I'm going to round to three significant figures. So, 1, 2, 3, but the fourth figure, the 6, rounds that 3 up to 4. So, it's 12.4, remember the units, centimetres squared. So, there's my first example with area. I'm going to do another one just now. Okay, so on to the next question. So remember, you have to work out the area of the triangle and because we don't know the perpendicular height, we're going to use this formula here. Remember in the previous example, the angle C was the angle that was in between the two sides that we know. Well, if we look at this example, I don't want to take this angle because I don't know this side. Remember, you need to know both sides next to the angle in order to use that angle. So in this one, we need to use the angle 42 as angle C because these are the two sides that we know. So again, I'm just going to label those A and B. So now, it's just a matter of substituting them into the formula to work out the area, just like before. So, we do a half times A, and A is 5, B is 8, and then the angle, so sine 42. So again, just put that in your calculator to work out the area. And it is 13.38, and so to three significant figures, we're going to round that to 13.4 centimetres squared. Okay, so now I'm going to do some harder problems where we might be given the area and we have to work out one of the sides or one of the angles, for example. example we've been given the area and we have to calculate one of the values here of x okay so all these sides are equal so we know this is an equilateral triangle hopefully you already know equilateral triangles 
all have angles of 60 degrees, which makes sense because in a triangle, all the angles add up to 180 degrees. And if they're all the same, well, 180 divided by three gives me 60. So now I can choose any of those angles as angle C. So I'm gonna choose that one there. And so the sides, either side of the angle C are A and B. And now I'm going to substitute in everything I know into that formula. So this time we know capital A, the area. So I'm going to replace that with 40. Then A and B, well, A and B, I'm going to replace with the letter X. So I've got times X times X, and then sine 60. So I've filled in everything that I know. Now I need to try and solve this equation. So I'm gonna tidy this up a little bit. I've got 40 equals a half. Well, x times x is just x squared. And sine 60 is there. Remember, when you multiply, it's the same as just writing them next to each other. So these are being multiplied together. So now we have to solve this equation. So to get rid of a half, I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by two because two halves is one. So I'm just left with one x squared sine 60. And on the left hand side, two multiplied by 40 gives me 80. So now I've got 80 equals x squared sine 60. So I need to get x by itself, but it's being squared and it's being multiplied by sine 60. So I'm now going to divide by sine 60 on both sides of the equation. So on this side they cancel because when you divide something by itself, you get one. So I'm left with one x squared. And on the left hand side, well, this is probably not a very nice number. So I'm just going to leave it as 80 over sine 60 because that means divide. And on the right, I've got one x squared. So the final step to get rid of that squared symbol there, I need to do the opposite. So I'm going to square root both sides of the equation. So when I square, square root, the right hand side, it just cancels out the squared and I'm left with x. And then on the left hand side, I have to put all of that in the calculator. I have to square root that fraction, 80 over sine 60. Make sure your square root goes all the way around the fraction, not just that 80. And if you put that in the calculator, that will find you the value of x. So square root button, fraction, 80 over sine 60. Don't forget to close your brackets if you're using the fraction button underneath. So that gives you 9.611 dot dot dot. So to three significant figures, 9.61. And this time it's just centimeters because it's a length that we're working out. It's not an area. Okay, so one more to finish and uh, yeah. Okay, so here's my final area problem. I've got a triangle here with two base angles that are the same, and I know one length here, which is five meters. So look for clues in your question. They've given me two base angles that are the same. So that means this triangle is an isosceles triangle, which means that both of these lengths are the same. So if this one's five meters, so is this one over here. Remember, we can only, only use our formula a half AB sine C, if we know an angle and two sides either side of that angle. Well, when I look at this triangle, I don't have that situation. Here's an angle, but I don't know this side. Same with this one, I don't know this side. And here's an angle that we don't know, but we have the two sides. Well, I can actually work out that angle at the top because I know what these two angles are down here and I know that in a triangle, all the angles add up to 180, I can work out that top angle. So here I've got 70 plus 70, which is 140 degrees, which means that one at the top must be 40, so that they add to 180. Now I can use the formula, because I have an angle with the two sides, either side of that angle. So that becomes angle C, and A and B, remember, it doesn't matter which way round you label those two sides. Now we can substitute into our formula. So, to work out the area, we multiply a half by the value of A, and the value of A in this one is 5. 
Then multiply by b, and the value of b is also 5. And then multiply by sine of the angle, and the angle here is 40. So just pop that in the calculator. So a half times 5 times 5 times sine 40. And that will calculate the area of that triangle. So just make sure you round correctly. I'm going to round to three significant figures in this question. So 9.31, 1, 2, 3, and 3 doesn't round the 1 up. Not forgetting the units, remember here the dimension here is 5 metres. So for area, it's metres squared. So I hope you feel a bit more confident now using this formula. If you're lucky, your exam board might give you that formula in the exam, but sometimes you might have to memorise it. But it's not too difficult as long as you remember you need an angle with the two sides, either side of that angle, I'm sure you'll be fine. Anyway, so uh, that's all for now. Bye-bye. Uh,